Hi, YouTube fans. This is Dr. Adam Norton. I just wanted to give you an update about what's going on with the channel and everything. First, I want to thank YouTube for the good stuff. For I put the videos up there, and there's been positive things with getting all the subscribers. You know, I was really happy I got all these you know, 121,000 subscribers. I was really excited about that. So I just want to start by thanking YouTube for this opportunity with this job. There's been some cool aspects to it. But I have a lot of questions, and maybe some other creators can help me out because I'm having a lot of problems. And of course, it's impossible to get a hold of YouTube and ask them questions about things. Basically, uh, I'm having problems with copyright infringement on my videos. Here are some of the issues I'm having. The Zebra videos that got millions of views out there. It seems that anytime I create a YouTube video that does well, one of the first things that happens is it gets demonetized for one reason or another. Then the second thing is another person, another YouTube channel re-uploads my video content without my permission. Then the third thing is they don't get demonetized off of the video and they get a lot of subscribers and they make a lot of money. Um, it's very frustrating. It doesn't seem fair that I don't, that I get demonetized, I don't make the money, and yet in a developing country or somewhere, they make a copy of the video and they get all the money and all the subscribers and everything. It just doesn't seem right. I've reported the theft of the video. In fact, I've reported hundreds and hundreds of copyright infringement on my videos. I spend every, every day for a year, I've reported copyright on it. And YouTube changed the policies. You can appeal that process, counter notification. So YouTube has made it very easy for a channel to appeal my copyright violation all they have to do is there's a form and it just takes a few seconds they just put a name in there it doesn't even have to be the real name they put fanatic in there and it generates this form and then I have to I have 10 days to appeal with a federal court case if I want to keep my own content I've actually gotten legal assistance on this like who actually does that you can't have frivolous lawsuits these people, they don't even provide the correct address of a place like, ah, it's just so frustrating. It's just, they can put the fanatic. So I'm suing the fanatic with no address, no information. I can't take that to a federal court and get them to make a case on that. I can't contact anyone at YouTube. It's just like auto-generated responses. I've tried with the chat room. I'm appealing to other creators and YouTube fans if you know what I can do or have any advice on this. So specifically, like one example is this channel, this channel, The Fanatic, that they'll take like a few seconds of my content and then they will put it several times within one video and then they, they make a video with like a computer generated narration and the narration doesn't even fit the video and they just use segments there'll be like there'll be a few segments of my content and they switch it with someone else's content that they took without permission and then it's back to my zebra footage then someone else's content then a few seconds of more of my crocodile content and then they create this video and they get millions of views i've seen like five and a half million views on one and then not only that then they re-upload they have other channels then they have the mexican version of it el fanatico and then they reuse the video again on that channel there's a german version like der fanatiker then they reuse the clips of my video on that and they will come up with like a fake source under let's say this is a five zero safari this video and they also they put the fanatiker logo and then they copy it again on el fanatico der fanatic here the brilliant is another channel i don't even know how many channels they have where they're reusing my content and that of other creators and making millions of views I looked up the worth of the Fanatic channel and it shows they're pulling in $2.3 million a year. And yet they can't share any of the proceeds with me. I've written to them and it's just very suspicious. The first time they write back, they say they're based out of Lahore, Pakistan, and they aren't really. It's not a real place. The reason why they say Lahore, Pakistan is they know I can't go there easily. And then it turns out like, oh, oh, they're based in, in Germany. That's also another false name or they're based in Mexico or then it came back to, uh, I'm corresponding with someone in Zimbabwe who won't even give their name. This is Tatenda. And Tatenda, as I know from being in Africa, is a greeting. It, it means like thank you or blessings or whatever. 
So I write back asking questions like, if you want, they're like, hey, we're willing to purchase your content. And I'm like, on how many channels? And I know like they want it on more than one channel. They're going to put it on all of their channels. So name, give me the, the links and the names of all the channels. I need your full name, your real name. <laughs> I need your address. And they don't want to provide any of that. It's just really very suspicious, just very frustrating. In addition to the YouTube websites that the Fanatic uses my content on, they have a Facebook channel where then they re-upload the videos again. It's very easy with editing software. They just use the same clips over and over. So they just cut the clips and then they rearrange it again. I don't understand why they have so many subscribers. They're just cutting and they're cranking out every day they've got more videos. It's just, they, they surf the net for the top animal videos that are getting millions of views. They just the screenshot capture that and another one that's getting millions of views. They chop the segment and just like paste it together. And then they have this computerized narration and um, the narration doesn't even fit the video. It's not the right location. It's not the right animal, but then that helps them stay monetized because then they can say it's educational material. Again, very frustrating. Here you can see their logo is the pirate. So what does a pirate have to do, you might ask, with animal videos or nature? It has nothing to do with it. I believe the pirate is showing that this, it's all pirated videos. That's what I think their logo, the pirate for the fanatic is for. It's ha ha, they're laughing at us. We just pirate videos, we cut them, splice them together and get a million subscribers almost on one channel and millions of videos and they're making a ton of money. I just feel like that's what you know the fanatic and the pirate is all about. Can you explain that YouTube is asking you to file a federal lawsuit and obtain a court order and send that to them? And you've been told by counsel that that's very, very unusual and very, very difficult, but you don't even have the name of a real person to serve legal documents on. The responses Adam receives from YouTube keeps saying that he has 10 days to obtain and send them a federal a, a, an order issued by a federal court in a case he has brought against the individual listed in YouTube's, listed in the counter notification, an order by a court ruling that that entity has infringed on his copyright. That is something that is virtually impossible to get let alone in 10 days. From the start, it's, it's impossible to serve someone, even if you were to have a, an attorney draft a complaint and have a federal court issue a summons, how do you serve it on, some, on a fake name of someone who lives in Pakistan? Every person listed on these counter notification, Adam has looked up in Google. He's unable, been able, able to find any, any verification that these are real people. It's folly to go into federal court to bring suit against people who are, don't exist. And all he's asked YouTube for is to require these people to send in a copy of their passport or information verifying that they're a real person and a real address where they can accept service. And YouTube has ignored every one of those requests and instead continually just demands that Adam send them a court order. And that's, you know, that's demanding that he make bricks out of hay and water. I, it, it's, it can't be done. So the other thing with it too is when we've asked for the fanatic channels, Der Fanatico, El Fanatico, The Brilliant, they don't even have to be careful. So the first time I'm talking, the first dozen things, it's, it's someone in Lahore, Pakistan. Then other times it's like suddenly they're based out of Zimbabwe is Tatenda. Then it's someone else. Then suddenly their their story is not consistent. I mean, it wouldn't hold up. They don't even have to be consistent with their story. Then it's it, the channels in Mexico. Then there's somebody else. Then it's Der Fanatiker based out of Germany. And they're confronted about them. So through the person in Zimbabwe, they're like, oh, well, we have locations all over the world. So it was also, it was to throw me off in the first place was to say Pakistan, because we have to get permission to enter the country of Pakistan. So they know very well that I'm not going to go there and file a court case. And then they, uh, and then they keep switching it and switching it, which shows that they're not being honest and it shows a lot of inconsistency. Right. It's, it's a huge expense to file a federal lawsuit. And, and, and to proceed and file a federal lawsuit when you don't even have the name of a real person is utterly ridiculous. The federal courts don't want people doing that. The attorneys involved in that lawsuit are violating their own, potentially violating their own uh, licensing by bringing frivolous lawsuits. And yet that's what YouTube is demanding. So what I really like YouTube to do is these channels had to provide an address to set up the Google AdSense account. 
it would be very easy for YouTube to match the address in like Lahore, Pakistan that they're giving to me to the address that the Fanatic channel originally provided to get to the check. Like they had to receive a piece of mail and it, it's probably was not, it did not go to the bank account that they're, that they're getting checks at is probably at the United States. It would be so easy to catch them in a lie. And I don't have the ability to look up their Google AdSense account as far as I know to see where they're getting payments from YouTube. But I know it's not to Lahore, Pakistan or to Germany or unless they're a lot bigger than I and I really realize YouTube does have an address, an address. They had to provide an address to become monetized in the first place. And YouTube had to send a piece of mail to the address that the fanatic provided in order to get future payments from YouTube. And if any creators have successfully responded to a counter notification, please let Adam know how you did that, because it doesn't seem like it's possible unless you have unlimited funds to engage in litigation against fictitious people in, in, in foreign countries. I'm sure that one response that people would be like, well, at some point you just, you know, when your video has been out there for a while, you just have to drop it. But if I made the amount of money I should have in the first place off it with it, like being monetized, like I'd feel like, well, I got a significant amount of money. I didn't even make a fraction of what the video should have made. It was 36.5 million views for one and 14 million views for another. I didn't really even make any of the money. Whereas this channel is making a lot of money from it. And again, pertaining to like, oh, you just need to drop it and make new videos. But the problem is they reuse the footage over and over again. It isn't like they just stole it once and put it in one video on one channel. Like one video that they create might have four pieces of my content in it. And then they repeat, then they like cut the video in half and put it backwards and then they post they repost it again and again and again like with the content so it's, it's not like one instance of video piracy that's used the best part the highlight of your best part of your video that got the millions of views once no it's like over and over and then it's other videos that I've made that they also use they must have me on a list I'm sure they just taught they type in like top animal attack videos and they see the ones that get the millions of views and then they cut segments out of that and they use it so these channels the fanatic or fanatic here they never make any original content, nothing. It's, it's all just other creators' content that they've used without permission. So they've never actually filmed anything themselves. They just take other content and they splice it together and they crank out videos as fast as they can. Like some, like at least like one a day, two a day. Like, I don't know, I can't even keep track. There's so many channels that are run by El Fanatico, The Brilliant, they're all the same company. Yeah, it's a real racket. This is it's very frustrating. I wish like YouTube would look into it. If you look at the thumbnails, like they'll have hundreds of thumbnails, they're the same thumbnails on the other channel, on the other channel, on the other channel of the same videos that are just rearranged over and over again. Much of it is my content. I'm sure other content of other creators that aren't aware of this or have just decided to drop it because it's really, really difficult to pursue. Another point I wanted to make, sorry, there's a lot of complaining. The channel that's uh, borrowing my content without my permission has had none of the expenses. They don't film anything. They just copy segments of other creators that are getting millions of views and reposting it. I actually flew to these locations. I actually flew to Africa. I mean, it was the flights were very expensive. The hotels were expensive. I had to pay a guide. I had to go on a safari. It was during the height of the pandemic. I was risking my life. There were a lot of expenses. I've invested in new equipment. So I have lost money with this YouTube endeavor. I thought it was going to be a good idea. Like I am always in the negative. I can't even come anywhere near the cost of the expenses it cost me to create these videos. These channels, the Fanatico, the Brilliant, El Fanatico, they have none of the expenses. It doesn't take much time just to screen capture someone else's video. You know, Premiere Pro I'm using, it just takes seconds just to chop it up and put it into a video. Sometimes even the narration is what I typed in the description and it's just a robot reading the words of what I wrote or they've even reused their narration in other videos and it doesn't match what's going on within the video and it's not even correct, it's not the right location. Not that people really care. Maybe they just want to see the, the animal attack clips. But then that's why my animal attack clip is so important. They're taking the 30 seconds of the part that everyone's looking at for the millions and millions of views and then that's what they use. Another thing I wanted to talk about was the fact that many of these channels are repeat offenders of taking my content and other people's content. At first, I would, you know, just tell people, hey, please take down the video. I was just being really nice and helpful and everything. I thought like, ah, I don't want them to get a strike on their account, you know. But I've kept track of people and then the same people just do it again and again. They, other people will write me an email, oh, I, oh, it was an accident. My daughter recorded that on accident. It's my channel, oh, please. And then I would give them a break. 
you know, I'm very compassionate in that way. But as I get hundreds and hundreds of these, and I've kept track of them, that's the same people like, hey, wait, now you've done this to me three times. Like, so none of them really being honest when they say, like, they accidentally recorded your video. Originally, I thought YouTube's policy was if you take people's content without the permission and you get caught three times in a row, then your channel's taken down. You know, three strikes and you're out. So then I've noticed many of these channels have done more than three times, like four times, five times, six times. Like, what's going on? Like, it's a lot to keep track of. Like, I, I've got like hundreds of pages of stuff where I'm keeping track of people and it's just not really worth the time keeping track of it. But then you have to if you want to have some kind of case against them. So then I realized like, oh, the rules are, well, the first time is just kind of a warning. You know, so that one doesn't count. Then I got three more times. Then I then I looked more into the, the rules. I don't know if the rules have changed. You get to take, you can have three strikes in a 90 day period. So then, and then it restarts again. Then you can, you can have more strikes. So even if they get three, four strikes, some of them are really clever and they space it out. The channel will never be taken down. It might be a little harder on people that don't have a thousand subscribers yet and aren't monetized. I guess if you get a strike or multiple strikes, then you don't, supposedly they won't monetize your channel. But especially these big channels, they got it down. They can take, you know, some of them have taken my content so many times. It's way beyond four strikes or five strikes. So I report it and then I win the copyright strike. It says, well, the video has already been removed. So like I reported them for taking my content and they immediately remove it. And then it's not even counted as a strike. I don't think there's different terms in there. There are different messages. Did they even get a strike on them? So the answer is no, they did not get a strike on their account. As a creator, I recommend to you if I want you to know this, because I know you might feel bad that another channel gets a strike on their account, but it takes an awful a lot of strikes for a channel to get taken down. And it takes even more strikes for a really, really large channel to be taken down down. When a channel is really making YouTube a lot of money, they're given a signal to leave that channel alone. They kind of get to break certain rules on every level. So just know this, if someone takes your content, don't feel bad about reporting them for a strike because it takes a lot. Nothing's going to happen to them the first one or the second one or the third one. Just report it and, and help this copyright issue. It's not really three strikes and you're out for a, for a channel. It, it depends. The wording depends. And you don't really get to know if after they take your content, if they really got a strike or if they they got some agreement with YouTube or they removed it or they didn't even have to remove it at all. They don't get a strike. They don't get anything. Yeah, I became educated about this system with the, the strikes for copyright violations. It, it didn't really mean what I thought it originally meant with uh, protecting content. The rules are really in favor of these channels that take clips of other people's videos and repost them. It seems like there's, they really want that so that more content is created. I understand if something's a reaction video. Many of these channels claim like I did it. That was a reaction video but there's no there's no reaction they just take my content and they put it up there like the fanatic is one there's like false fake narration under it other people with their with their excuses with the uh things like well i you know i changed the content one of the responses was like i actually flipped his video so it's reverse and that's why i shouldn't be taken down it's like you gotta keep it that takes it's just like one button to like flip it but to them like that's enough to be able to use your content they did enough to it and it's varying levels of that it is it's really it just takes a few seconds of changes and then it's like acceptable to take your content in a way i feel weird giving that information away because it's just really easy to borrow other people's content without your permission they seem to think if it's like less than 30 seconds or less than 20 seconds it's okay but that isn't really true in these court cases I'm just trying to figure it out if anyone has any answers on how to do these things and not get demonetized for the videos because it's a lot of work. It's a lot of money. It's a lot of time. I'd, I'd love to put out more videos for everybody, but I just don't really, I don't see the incentive of it where like I lose every time. Thanks again.